Okay, so on my video for the Shatter Kingdom Mission 14 won 25 and a half minutes with zero losses. I just got this comment here about the damage system to see how it works. Well, um, yeah, this is a good question because I have troops here that they fight huge armies and they don't die the entire time. Now, how does that work? So how about we just focus on that in the replay and nothing else? So the replay is accessible from a link that I provide. Well, I don't have it here in the video description, but I actually put it here, a link to it in this comment. So go get the replay, watch it in R6720 to follow along if you want. Or you can just see this demonstration that I'm showing you right now. This is from a player's standpoint. I'm going to show you in just a little bit, or I guess I can show you now. There was a thread about damage. So this is actually from the game's programming standpoint. You can see the URL up here. If you want to go to page 2 and 3, because it says page 1 of 3 here, um, currently right now the website is going through some maintenance, so you can just go down to the bottom and say next page or page 2 or 3. You can't normally select. But in the top here in the URL to go to the next page, you just say and start equals 15 to go to page 2 of 3 and start equals 30 to go to page 3 of 3 of this thread. But in, um, in this thread on first page, Chrome is the original can remake developer. He said that the code is here at this link. When you click on this link, it goes to here to his GitHub page, but it's not to the exact file that he was talking about. The file actually moved, or I should say the location moved, to here, to this URL. That's where it is. I went and searched for it. So he says on line 282 onwards, the code begins. So if you know the programming language or you can learn it, then this is the code for that. And I'm going to post a link in the video description to a PDF to, uh, which is saving this. So just in case the link changes again, you still have access to the code from my Google Drive. But anyway, on the first page, if we go down a little bit, We'll see this post by Random Lyrics that he talks a little bit about the hit points and he talks about hit point direction here too. And that really does take into effect. It has it has always taken into effect in the cam remake. And even in the original game, they talk about and they train us with the battle tactics that if you attack from behind, it's gonna be very effective. They're showing here, of course, that the axe fighters are much weaker than the sword fighters but because we have some attacking them from behind, the red player is going to win in this battle. Assuming that you have a storm attack on them to get to them right as they start fighting. And it says that here. You can see the page number of the PDF. If you don't have access to the manual, you can go to knightsofmerchants.net and then go to extras. And then go to miscellaneous. And here are the manuals. So there's different versions, but in all of them you should still, I think, be able to find this page. It's um, under Battle Tactics, which is towards the very bottom in the bookmarks here. I just adjusted the window, so now you can see Battle Tactics is here. It's on the third page of Battle Tactics. But in this thread, on page 2, to get to the second page, you have to type in start equals 15 here in the URL itself to get to it currently. But this is the attack direction intensity. So what we see in the user manual, this, is, this shows that. So the unit is right in the center here, facing the 1, and his back is the 5. Keep that in mind as I show the troops by that building fence in the replay in just a moment. But these images on page 2, they are not visible if you're not a member and signed in to view this page in the thread. So here are the images that he provided. And he eventually said that this is the only value that wasn't correct, the 18 here for the scout. But all the other values are correct. But just view this thread for more details about the mechanics of the game. But I'm going to show you from a player standpoint what I did in order to achieve this. So let's go from the beginning. So he's being hit right now. 
So he was in danger. If he gets hit again by one of the, the next soldiers, then that puts him in severe danger to be killed. And you may find in the code that for fighting, it's random who they, they hit. They're not going to hit the same unit in the same location every time. But if it doesn't say that there, that's how it behaves. So he gets hit again a second time. But this time, the, the key thing is he didn't survive as long as that knight did. So how long they survive and how many hits a unit receives matters. And notice that this scout here for all of the units, this is true. If the unit is attacking him, then this scout here is attacking them from the side with a times three multiplier. I have them in a square formation like this so that it's always the case. So if this unit is fighting him, he's gonna get a times three multiplier hit by this unit. So no matter how it goes, I have an advantage. This player right here is gonna give him a times two if he's gonna face this one or this one. So this is really a death trap, but at the same time, these units are weak compared to iron armored troops. So it is possible that they die, but let's just see when I fast forwarded some, see now he's attacking him. Just look at the flag, it's white. So I move him away because he was getting hit by the previous unit. This knight actually came before I reloaded a save and hit him and killed him. So because I knew that I moved him away and then put him back so that this scout gets hit instead who's fresh. And after a while they have time to recuperate. But as a general rule, whoever was getting attacked last, if you move him away and you let the next unit that comes attack another unit of yours and then push that unit that you pulled away right back so he can still hit the AI unit, then it creates a very effective way of killing them without losing any units. And of course, mix that in with reloading saves and then you've got a definite way to do it. So I moved him away because he was getting attacked. Not necessarily that he died and I had to reload a save to figure out he died. It's just good general practice. I literally, when I was playing this, paid attention to this. And as you can see here, I had to move him away. But doing so had these two engage. So it's like, yeah, this is kind of random. Where they fight for a while and the knight died, but my troops survived. So you're going to have to just reload saves. That's the main thing. But it's also this too. In short, you can't just have the units here sitting still the entire time and expect for you to lose zero men even with save reloads. It doesn't matter how many you reload. But this is how you can manually do it and in theory without reloading saves. On the cam speedrun page, which I'm a super moderator of now, I just, for example, I can show you uh, how to get to it. It's the Peasants' Rebellion, and you go to Mission 3. I have here a win that it's zero losses, and it's actually live gameplay. So it is possible to not reload any saves and do this type of thing where you pull a troop away and then put him back and not lose any men. As another example, if you go to the Shatter Kingdom Mission 8, I only reloaded saves two times for this 23 minute and 45 second win. That's a very nice video you can watch. And I have a commentary explaining it. Specifically, in this part of the video, at 9 minutes and 14 seconds, I say this. Like this, you pull them away that the soldier that was being hit by the enemy AI. And you pull them back as soon as you can. Don't let it lag for too long. So basically that's what I was just saying, but that's pretty much like the part where I start talking about that setup. But anyway. So I'll fast forward it some. You see I'm doing this. I, I They hit. I reloaded saves if they die, but if they didn't, I generally don't pull them away because I was focusing on other things. But I will. It's, it's not like they stay like this the entire time. I do move them away on occasion as needed. But you can see in all of these, he's not hitting the same one every time. 